My name is Josh Cobb, and uh, I'm an engineer who developed some of this technology, but this is uh, really showing the Lotus NXT glass, which... So There's just a sheet of glass there? No, this is Gorilla Glass. The Lotus NXT is in the high-resolution displays made by AUO that is in here, and that enables our Lotus NXT enables very dense pixels. And those dense pixels are about 1,045 pixels per inch. And this is incorporated into an augmented reality demonstration using Gorilla Glass and our um, yeah. design, sorry, for the optics that go beneath it. Nice. And so actually the side that you look through is through here. I don't know if you can yeah. get in to see it, but. Uh, so, so, it's very important to have super high pixel density on this kind of application. So, right, because that enables you to have a small uh, display which shrinks the size of the system. It's like a 1080p there or even more? Yeah, this is 1920 by 1080 uh, are the displays. And so the Lotus NXT material is what allows the backplane to uh, be able to have very small pixels on it, less than 25 this microns. This is lower is better? Yeah, so it's uh, the total pitch variation, the total thickness variation, and also the um, coefficient of thermal expansion allows you to make very fine features on the back plane. So my name's Ellen. Um, I'm here uh, at the Corning booth launching the new Corning Astroglass. Um, the Corning Astroglass is a backplane TFT glass substrate. Um, here we have a corner of a television um, that we've cut in half, and you can see the backplane TFT substrate is this stack of glass right here. Um, <coughs> these are color filter and TFT uh, backplane substrates, along with uh, the optical stack and the LGP, so this is what the inside of the television looks like if you were to cut the corner off of it. Um, so, um, uh, Corning is glass company, right? Yes. And that goes all over the electronics all the time? And why is it so important to have the glass? So the glass substrate is what actually enables the um, panel makers to make the TFT that is required for the display that you actually watch. Um, so the Astroglass is, like I said, a backplane substrate. Um, it's specifically designed for the oxide TFT process. Um, and so we have designed the substrate to do three very specific things in customers' processes. Um, the, those three things are, one, it's designed to be very dimensionally stable, um, which is important because when the customer takes the glass and puts it through their panel making process, they want to make sure that they have low total pitch variation. So if you want to take a look at that. This plate here, we're showing uh, the difference between low total pitch variation and high total pitch variation. Just in the Um And so you can see here, the, these lines are the TFT and the, the color, the RGB, are the pixels. Um, and so low total pitch variation glass keeps the alignment very nicely for the panel maker. This is like enlarged by a million this times is a, or something? Yeah. Um, and this is a high total pitch variation. You can see that the um, pixels don't align very well with the TFT. So the point is to make sure that when the panel maker puts our glass through their process, that they have good alignment um, and good... Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Good. Good yeah. alignment and good um, panel economics in their process. So um, what does it improve on the TV to have Astro Glass? So um, right now what's happening is panel makers are moving from amorphous polysilicon to an oxide TFT process as they're going to higher resolution, faster refresh rate panels. And so the substrate is specifically designed to enable um, them to move to these really large form factor, high resolution televisions. So what's the main advantage of going to oxide uh, instead of the amorphous silicon? So um, when you're moving from amorphous silicon to a process like oxide TFT, um, you're required to do so for high resolution, and it's because it increases the electron mobility. It's what allows the panel makers to really um, increase the resolution to these super high... Um, is this an 8K? This is an 8K. 8K. So this is basically enabling 8K. This is enabling oxide TFT for 4K and 8K television. And also yeah. better 4K. And better 4K. 
and uh, does it provide better trans transmis uh, transmission of the the, the, the luminance, the, the colors or something? Or um, no, it's it is specifically designed for uh, dimensional stability for oxide TFT it, um, and lower light leakage. I wouldn't say it's higher transmission relative to ours. Right. And uh, what do you talk about here? So here we're showing the difference um, when you go in pixel, so in resolution, when you go from full HD to 4K to 8K, and so you can see um, the crispness and the picture quality as you go from the lower resolution to the higher resolution. And this is what um, the backplane substrate, the Corning Astroglass backplane substrate that we're making enables for panel makers. Does this go just on TV market or a whole bunch of other stuff? Um, televisions, tablets, notebooks, anybody that's using Oxide TFT for their panel making process. Is it going to be on smartphones? Um, probably not. We have Lotus NXT glass, which is um, geared specifically for LTPS, which is what is um, used for smartphones currently. All right. Thanks a lot. Sure. All right. Awesome. Let's go Claire. around here. Uh, hi. 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 So who are Claire. you? My name's Claire. And what are you showing here? Okay, so here today we are demo this uh, Iris yeah. glass. Can you come closer to the mic? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which is a uh, glass like I play. And now we have uh, this three monitors being commercially available in the market. We have 24 inch and 27 inch here. And glass like I play actually is a material that you use uh, like I play to guide the light through. And uh, the reason that glass is so good is because glass doesn't absorb moisture. And also if you're under this uh, high temperature or high humid environment, glass will not expand. So with this, it can give you a very slim design. Is and this also what you talk about vessel. here, this, this yes. stuff? So uh, which this, one is your, is your tech here? Uh, this is just like your demo here that we can do this. Um, this is extraction pattern, how we extract lights. And this is the dot size that we're talking about, 200 micron. And we can also make dot size as small as 36 micron. With this, you can have an even brighter set uh, to enable to increase your brightness by 10, 10%. So it increases the brightness on the, the PC monitor market? Is uh, that what it does? Uh, we also have some model being launched in the market for TV applications as well. And so it provides the best, uh, the best uh, PC monitor experience, super thin? And also brighter set. You right. also have a narrow bezel design. As you can see, that you also yeah. almost cannot see the border here. So those are the currently available in the market that you can see. Nice. And this one also has QD coating on our glass because of the process it requires high temperature. So, so you can it's only QD really glass? Uh, QD coating on our glass. Quantum dot? Yes. Coating? Yes. So not QD glass. How is um, it different? Because this QD, normally if you're talking about QD display, it's QD film. You, you have another film to uh, uh, in, embedded to the... So the quantum device. dot is on the glass? It's coated on the glass. All right. Yes. So, uh, so I'm George Kellogg. I represent Corning yeah. Precision Glass Solutions, the augmented reality solutions product line, which is high index glass that serves the augmented and mixed reality marketplace. So what you're looking at here are wafers of high index glass that are 150 millimeters, 200 millimeters, and 300 millimeters. The first example we're illustrating is that as you go larger in wafers, your economics, your costs for your lenses that go into your AR devices will go down. You get better materialization. What I'd like to highlight is we have glasses that are greater than 1.7 refractive index. We offer in production today 1.7, 1.8, 1.9 uh, refractive index glasses. Additionally, we have world-class metrology to ensure that we have very tight geometric tolerances and we have the ability to connect you to our Corning laser technologies for dicing of these from wafers into lenses that will go into your wearable device. We also have an example of a customer's wearable device that has used a Corning design high index glass to create a wearable augmented reality device. So uh, why do you do the glass in wafers? So wafers because the, the world of augmented reality, mixed reality customers are leveraging um, a significant installed base and capability from the semicon industry to automatically handle and process wafers of six, eight, and 12 inches in size. So you would do these in like those fabs that do wafers? Or so it, 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 will be, it will be a line constructed like a fab. It will not be a semiconductor fab, but it'll be a line that has incoming gray space into a clean area. You'll clean the wafers and then you do nanolithography, 
dicing of the wafers and then post-processing before they're assembled into a wearable. So this process here is a unique new kind of process? This process right here is using Corning existing uh, high-speed automated nano perforation for uh, dicing pieces out of high index glass. And what are the things I can see where those, those shapes? So these shapes are simulated lens sizes and they illustrate how many you would uh, be able to achieve out of a small diameter, medium size, and a larger diameter. So you get improved economics because you get much better materialization out of a larger wafer. And our customers are migrating to larger size wafers for and the production process. Does it do something in terms of the experience of the AR that's unique in the market? So relative to index, that's where the experience becomes different. You can, if you go from uh, say a 1.5 or 1.6 glass and go to high index, for each tenth of index, you increase the field of view for a like design by 5%. So as you go from 1.7 to 1.8 to 1.9, each gradation will give you five degrees of field of view larger, so the experience will be richer for the end user. So it's kind of like acting like a lens? Uh, it, is, it is in fact a lens, but the refractive index glass is really about managing an encoded photon through a waveguide structure and decoding it back to the end user. You do the waveguide too? Uh, we do not design waveguides. So Our there's a company design. making a waveguide on your glass? That's correct. And they, they use a high refractive index uh, resin that's matched to the glass and their proprietary design is, is processed on the glass through nanolithography. So it's like uh, not printed on but somehow yeah, so added on to you, the glass. You, you might say that it's, there's a process that's called NIL, NIL. It's a stamping process that yields uh, the encoding and decoding gratings on the glass. There are other techniques that they can deliver the, the technology as well. It's not always a surface relief grading. This example is, in fact. So it's very important to use Corning for the AR market? Uh, to deliver high quality imagery for the user and to provide the most convenient and aesthetically pleasing form factor, small form factor, and uh, to deliver basically the crisp contrast and color that you expect using Corning High Index Glass will deliver that experience. Hi, my name is Corey Moriarty. I work for Corning Grow Glass. Um, today we're showcasing what is called selective surface etching. And this is a technology using our inkjet proprietary technology on the back of the screen print to the grill glass. And so what was that? What is that? Oh, That's so the this back is of what? Uh, on the back of like the grill glass. Um, so this is actually just like a puck, but um, on the front we have an etching called selective surface etching. And this provides a lifelike feel to the texture. So if you want to take a look at it, you so, can actually see that the etches yeah. um, to the actual image. So it provides texture somehow? Yes. How can you do that? So using like an AG etching, we're able to simulate the, um, the, the graphic image on the, the glass itself. Nice, and you also simulate wood? Yep, so we, we're showing the precisions of how we can do this through the wood, um, lining with the lines in here. So that would be uh, kind of like, uh, let's say, on the back of a potentially a phone or back of a right. tablet, a laptop, or yeah. So we're working with our customers to see the, the best use case for the application. These are great for our decoration. Um, we also are seeing different types of uh, use cases, like they say, for example, for a back of the phone, a laptop, um, any other type of application that they're looking for. So and what's great about this one is it shows how light refra refracts from it. So as you move it, you can see how the pattern changes as well. How do you how do you make these? It's, it's through an uh, etching process. So you can make uh, huge kilometers of these like uh, quickly, or it takes a long time. Um, we usually don't comment on the supply chain, but yeah. we but we, we are, are able to do a process, and we work with our customers now. Right. And uh, there's also the, the the backs of these. Yeah. So what we are introducing today is um, our Corning Grill Glass Six, which was launched last year. And this is a glass which provides 15 consecutive drops on rough surfaces on average um, from one meter drops. Nice. Uh, so you, you don't just do the front of the phones, you do the backs? Yeah, so we actually do both the front and the back application. We, a lot of customers like to use like a wire, wire charging capability along with, um, for 5G networks, it's great for transmission connectivity.